Hey everyone, welcome to 996 The Howl episode 33. For the uninitiated, this is an unedited YouTube vlog discussing everything Arizona Coyotes. Again, great couple of games for the Coyotes, picking up three points out of four against Ottawa, New Jersey. We're going to start with the Ottawa game. Coyotes put up a 40-shot effort, I think maybe 41, 42 shots. They were uh, leading Ottawa 2-0, and then Ottawa climbs back, and in the overtime, Carlson wins it for Ottawa. Ottawa's playing a back-to-back, -back, managed to get all four points in those two games. Uh, good for Ottawa. They hung in the game. Coyotes couldn't get the insurance goal they needed. They couldn't make it. 3 nothing. They couldn't get that extra goal. And they had so many power play opportunities. I mean, that game, they really needed a power play goal. And it, it never showed up for them. Perlini and Kraus get the two goals for the Coyotes. Perlini scores again against New Jersey. He's up to 12 goals. Perlini, he wasn't even supposed to be on the team this year. And he's got uh, 12 Genos. Just, he's having an amazing year, rookie year. And his release is just so good. It reminds me of just the elite snipers in the league right now, like Kessel, you know, maybe Kane, Tarasenko. Whenever it's on his stick, it's gone in a flash and so accurate too. Just uh, a really good surprise this year for the Coyotes. Duclair had a great game against Ottawa and also a great game against New Jersey. I'm really liking his game. I wish, like I said in other videos, he had better line mates, but he's making it work with Holland and um, McGinn. And then I think to myself, who's he, Who's Tippett going to replace Duclair with on the top two lines? I mean, everyone's really clicking. Readers, Pine and Points almost every game, every other game. Domi, Dvorak, Verbata are clicking. They're producing. I mean, like I said, Perlini's playing really well. So... There's no room for Declare to move up in the lineup. And hopefully Declare knows that and he continues to truck along. He's getting his chances. He's getting point blank chances. He had a great chance against New Jersey right after, I think, Chikrin's goal. And uh, Schneider just shut the door on him. He couldn't believe it. So they lost 3 2 in overtime against Ottawa. Against New Jersey, they had a 4 0 lead with goals from Verbata, Reeder. Perlini, like I said, Jacob Chikrin with a, a nice uh, a nice goal, nice feed from Ekman Larson. I think Ekman Larson on that goal uh, just roofs it over Schneider. So it was four nothing. Coyotes are feeling good, but credit to New Jersey, they they hung in there. They made it an interesting hockey game. They made it four three, and then Tony D, Tony D. Gained a lot of ice time lately, and he's even playing on the power play. Like I said in other videos, I wanted to see D'Angelo on the power play. Take out Murphy, take out Stone. Fortunately, Stone left to make room for D'Angelo on the power play. And uh, he shows that's his natural spot is on the power play. He didn't score on the power play, but he showed his offensive upside on that goal. Just waiting out the New Jersey Devils and finding an open seam to shoot the puck and he scores it's 5-3 New Jersey still hangs in there makes it 5-4 and then a penalty shot for Taylor Hall I mean the coyote killer when he was on Edmonton everyone's clenching themselves everyone's biting their nails fortunately Smith shuts the door they get a big W W at home getting points in back-to-back -back home games I mean the Coyotes are feeling good the rookies are, are shining. Reader's playing really well. I got to give credit to Reader. I really I really love him. I was kind of upset that he prolonged his contract negotiations in the, in the late summer, early fall. Even after the World Cup tournament, he didn't have a contract signed with the Coyotes. I think it was a week into training camp, he finally signed his uh, two-year contract. I want Reader here for the long term. But I also don't want to overpay him. I feel like he's getting paid the perfect amount for what he does. If he scores more goals, then yeah, he'll get a pay raise. He'll get paid more like he wants. But, I mean, he's never broken 20 goals. Maybe he'll break it this year. He's up to 14. 
and he's clicking, so maybe he'll break 20 goals. But if he doesn't break 20 goals this season, he's got to temper his expectations for what he's worth. He's very valuable, penalty kill. He gets partial breakaways almost every game. He has great speed, an accurate shot. He's just got to work on his execution a bit more if he wants uh, the big bucks. So Coyotes have back-to-back games tonight and tomorrow. Tonight against Colorado. Then tomorrow they'll fly out to La La Land to face LA. And the newly acquired Jerome Ginla. Can't wait to watch that game. Hopefully Domingue gets a start tonight against a struggling avalanche team. Give Smith a break. Make him rest up. Uh, and be ready to face LA the next day. So I want to see Domingue in net. Hopefully he gives the Coyotes a good game. I want the Coyotes to continue to push, continue to score goals. Their breakouts have been much, much better. Reminiscent of late January, early February. They're crisp. If there's no play to make, they're not forcing it. They're turning back around. They're adjusting their transition play. All the lines seem to be clicking. You know, forward lines, the defensive pairings. Luke Shen playing amazing. Oliver struggling still. He's just playing good. And for Oliver, that's not good enough. We expect him to be that elite defenseman. But right now, he's just playing like a just a normal good defenseman. And hopefully next season, he, he goes back to his OEL form. Because we really need him if this team wants to succeed. Burmistrov's still injured. I really want to see him, see him back in the lineup. See him with Duclair. Maybe take out Juris. Juris is playing really well, but... I think we need more skill on that third or fourth line. I don't even know what the third and fourth line is. It seems like the Doan, Juris, Kraus line and the Holland, McGinn, Duclair line kind of rotate third and fourth line. It's not as clear as the first and second line of Dvorak, Domi, Verbata, and Martinuk, Perlini, Reeder. It's not as clear like, those are one and two lines, but third and fourth lines, I don't know. They play about the same minutes, and it's hard to tell which is the third line. I want Burmy to be back in the lineup. I miss his offensive skill. I, I miss him holding the puck and just calming things down, almost like another Max Domi who's playing great. I mean, Domi every night just plays to what you expect him to do. Great playmaker. Sees the ice really well, always looking for that open man, always looking for that guy that the team doesn't even know is open. I mean, he made the New Jersey defense look look pretty bad in the first period that game on Saturday. So good on Max. There's about 14, 15 games left. I mean, it's been a pretty interesting year. 14 games, 15 games left for the captain. I doubt he's going to play again next year. So just savoring all these games and just looking out at Doan and seeing the energy he puts into each game. And um, I think he knows it's the final games of his career. So hopefully he he turns it on like he did in Carolina a few weeks ago where he got the three-point game and got got the belt from the team that game. So that's it for me. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your support.